What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the spirit of us doing the videos on the budget build back here, uh, I figured I'd give you guys a couple options for budget peripherals if you guys were looking for that as well. Um, so in terms of like a monitor or something like that, I don't have one in house, but we have done a video on a budget monitor that I still would suggest to you and I will link it up here for you guys. You guys can check that out. Uh, it's a great monitor, I would still suggest it. But as far as a keyboard and mouse, you guys still need a couple options for that. So a company called Sing, they're on Amazon and uh, you may have seen their products on there before. Uh, they make some pretty budget oriented uh, peripherals and they're actually a lot better than you may think uh, from my testing anyway. And uh, I figured they'd be a great little option for you guys if you guys are looking for a set of budget peripherals um, and it may be a great you know, accompaniment to this uh, budget PC we just built back here. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and I'll get right into what this mouse and keyboard feature. Let's go. So before I get into all the features of this mouse and keyboard, let's go ahead and do a quick unboxing of both of them so you guys can see what the experience is like. Already at first glance, they look awesome on my desk and uh, with the new build, I think they're looking great with all that RGB flowing. Uh, so they definitely match the build that we just did. And uh, I think first we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and start with the mouse. So this mouse came from Vixing, but if you look at it on Amazon, it's actually from a company called PicTech. I'm not sure if they're actually the same company or they're different, uh, but that's just so you guys could be able to find it. So this mouse has an ergonomic FPS style layout and uh, for hands that are about you know medium to large like mine, it would totally be fine. Uh, it's just a little bit more narrow than my usual mouse that I use, which is a Corsair Iron Claw. And I'll show you a comparison right here. So as you can see right here, it's right next to my Corsair Iron Claw. Uh, and it's just a bit narrower. Uh, you can see that the Corsair Iron Claw comes out a bit more as far as its width. So uh, if you guys are used to a bit more wider of a mouse and you're more comfortable with that, uh, you may wanna look at a different option. But I did find as soon as I got used to this mouse and the width that it is, uh, it was still an enjoyable FPS experience. This mouse is rated for 30 million clicks and it features a frosted, as they call it, surface. And it's really just that rubberized texture that you guys know and love. Uh, so it feels very great in your hands. This mouse features 10 programmable buttons that you can set to basically do whatever you would like. Uh, but generally like in this configuration right here, the top two uh, buttons are the right and left click as always. And then there's an extra button there they call the fire button. Uh, I'm sure you can macro that to do whatever you would like. And then the scroll wheel of course can click as well. And then the top DPI buttons that are usually there, there's three of them actually. And the top two are for turning your DPI up and down. Uh, which also this mouse goes up to 12,000 DPI. So you guys can really get whatever uh, rate you guys really, really are comfortable with. And then that backmost button uh, is actually to change the RGB colors. And lastly, this thing features these three side buttons, which are the usual two uh, bumper buttons is what I like to call them. And then it also has the sniper button is a lot of companies call it. It is this outermost button right here. And they usually use that as some kind of macro or whatever you do in your games. Uh, you can use it to throw a grenade or something like that, but it can be useful if you do need to use it. Now, texture wise and comfortability wise, I really do like the mouse as it does have the rubberized texture that I know and love. And it also does have this other texturized um, kind of characteristic to the sides of the mouse that really keep it from slipping out of your hand and it feels really nice. 
And as I said before, the mouse does feature a 12,000 DPI sensor on the bottom uh, that feels really great, especially in FPS games with an eye tested. Uh, I had no problems with it. Um, and then on the bottom, it does have a secret little hidden feature. You can just go open the bottom like so. And out come all the weights for the mouse. So you can actually take out or put back in any weights on this that you would like to fully customize the weight of your mouse, which is a very cool addition to a mouse that is really only $19. Just one thing I wish they would have included is some kind of button to actually push out the uh, the release for putting these in and out because you do just kind of have to turn this little latch that's on it and then try to like bump the mouse to get it out. Uh, so that could be one thing they could add to this is just kind of adding like a little bit of a button to uh, make this thing come out easier, that's all. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the keyboard. So this may be one of the only times that I review a non-mechanical keyboard on this channel uh, because I'm so used to mechanical keyboards now that usually I don't use anything else. Uh, but this one piqued my interest just because of the large feature set that it has, and I'll go through that here in just a minute. But the main thing that drew me to this keyboard is because it has this little feature right here. It has a little tray at the top of the keyboard that you just pull out. And you can take your smartphone or some kind of device and you can actually set it in there and it will actually hold your smartphone or whatever device you put in there uh, so you can actually have it sitting in front of you while you're gaming working whatever uh, that way so if you get a text or something like that you can actually see that somebody texted you and it's actually pretty useful because I notice when I'm editing and stuff like that, uh, I don't notice my phone a lot of times. And uh, like right now, my girlfriend's calling me and I would have missed that. It would have been in my pocket. So there you go. I didn't even plan that guys. That just happened. <laughs> so this keyboard is listed as a mechanical feeling keyboard. And to be honest, compared to my other keyboard, you can see right here, it's really not the same, but it does it feel a little bit better than some membrane keyboards. Yes, it does. Uh, but I will let you have a comparison listen to what they both sound like right now. And just keep in mind, this is a, you know, membrane, memcanical, whatever you want to call it. It's not memcanical, actually. It's just a membrane keyboard uh, that has the mechanical feel. Uh, and then this keyboard up here is actually a mechanical keyboard that has Cherry MX silent keys in it. So I'll let you listen to the difference right now. Another feature of this keyboard that I did find really awesome was the fact that on the top right of it, it does have dedicated uh, media keys with a volume scroll wheel, which is really, really cool to see on a budget keyboard. Uh, and some high-end keyboards don't even have this kind of stuff. And then over on the top left side, there's actually quick launch keys for certain programs. Uh, it's pretty cool to have that kind of stuff, especially the calculator, that one's always useful. Uh, but the one thing I don't like here is the fact that they have Internet Explorer right there. Why can't they have that as Google? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a personal gripe of mine because you guys already know that I use Google Chrome, but that's fine. I'm sure you can make map that to do Google anyway. It's just kind of funny they have Internet Explorer on there. So aside from those features, this keyboard actually is spill resistant, it says. So if you are a messy gamer and you happen to spill on your keyboard quite a bit, uh, you're kind of protected there. It doesn't say it's like spill proof, but it does say it's spill resistant. So I think there's some kind of stuff in there that will, uh, that will help you out if you do happen to spill on it accidentally. So of course, this keyboard does have a ton of lighting modes and uh, I'm trying to go through a couple of them here just so you guys get the idea, but just pressing the function key right here and some of these keys right here, this can actually change the lighting up and down. And then this one right here will change the speed of the lighting so you can make it really slow or you can make it really fast. So you can either have static colors or you can change like the RGB settings. So if you hold on function and press delete, it'll do different RGB patterns. You can do like a wave and a different type of wave pattern pretty much and like a, a circle pattern kind of thing. Uh, if you press this, it'll kind of just be a solid RGB color and you can actually change it to breathe as well like that. And then if you press home, it'll start doing these solid colors. And I believe it's the solid colors that breathe on that one. Um, and then you can just change it to whatever color you prefer. And then if you press end, I believe it just changes it right. Nope, just kidding. That's the solid colors that breathe. But yeah, you can have solid colors there or you can have the breathing solid colors. And then if you also press function and the page up or page down, you can actually enter the uh, customizable mode where you can actually make your own customizable um, layout options. So you can do this 
press page up and then you can basically just do whatever you'd like with the numbers um, and then kind of record your own uh, customizable color layout. So of course a keyboard like this does come with its quirks like this uh, logo right here in the middle that only stays red. There's no customizable option for that. So uh, it'd be kind of cool if you could customize that to match the rest of the keyboard, but unfortunately you cannot. And then even though it already has dedicated media keys, there are duplicates of it on the F keys right now. Uh, not sure why they did that, but uh, I guess maybe they just left them there. But uh, I guess they could have been something else if you wanted them to be. But uh, yeah, just so you guys know, they're they're there twice. And they do advertise online that the sides have a strip light that lights up. Uh, and you can see that it does do that. And I think they're using the process of kind of using like the other parts of the illumination, like where the keys are to hopefully illuminate this side. And I think it's just relying on the light from the keys to pass through this to create the illusion that it is lighting up. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this gave you a couple options if you guys were looking for some budget-oriented peripherals and you didn't know what to buy. Uh, of course, if you guys are not really into, in the, in the terms of the keyboard, if you're not into like the membrane keyboards like this one is, if you're more into the mechanical ones, they do make those kind of options as well for mechanical keyboards. Uh, if you want something more clicky or even like a 10 keyless design, they do make those as well. And I'll link a couple of them in the description so you guys have a few different options, all right? So if you guys enjoy this content, make sure you guys give it a like. I really enjoy seeing you guys do that. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything to tell me, uh, or anything I could do better, make sure you guys leave in the comments below. I really enjoy seeing that as well. And then if you guys really enjoy my content, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on so you guys can be notified in my next video, and I will see you guys then. Later.